so today I decided to do something with the release of MK11 on the horizon. I figured it would be a good idea to go ahead and start getting my foot feet wet when it comes to doing tutorials and guides and all that good stuff. So today I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you an in-depth look at how I perceive frame data because when I first started learning frame data, it wasn't that easy. Faction battle. He will be helping me with this tutorial. So let's see if I can get him in here. So when he joins, got my notes going. I'll be reading off my notes. Um, I'm gonna be using a few different characters to showcase what I can show you about frame data and what I know about frame data. Um, of course, Squid knows a little bit more about frame data than me, but he was shy around the camera, so um, I'll get him to help me when he can because he does tend to me regularly. So if I say something wrong, he'll correct me. startup frame for you. And Squid, if you can hear me, put your cursor on Molina. Hold on, let me see if he can hear me. He said he can barely hear me, so let me fix the audio. What about now? Is that better? If you can hear me now, put your cursor on Molina. Sub Zero Kung Lao Liu Kang Jackie Briggs. Ask him how the how the audio is doing right now. Uh, let me see if I can get it turned up a little bit. Okay, is that better? If that's better, do a dash forward. If it's wait a minute, much better. Okay, thank you. Alright, so for this first part of the tutorial, I'm going to explain startup. And let me show you the move. So, basically what you want to do is go into your moves list, find your normal attacks, which will be one button starters. These are going to be your dial, dollar combos or just your combos. You don't want to look at this first. First thing you want to do is look at the basic buttons. So for Liu Kang, we'll go over his one, two, three, and four. So one will be eight frames. 2 would be 10 frames, 3 would be 11 frames, I like these. and his 4 would be 14 frames. So basically the fastest button Liu Kang has is his standing 1, which would be, I think it was 9, eight, yeah, 8 frames. So that's going to be his fastest button. I don't think that's right. I think his fastest button will be 4-1, no, yeah, 4-1 at 6 frames. So that'll be his fastest button. Let's highlight that. So that's gonna be the button I'm gonna use. And if Squid would use, let's see. let me see Jackie's fastest button. Okay, Jackie has a, I wanna say an eight or a nine frame mid, which is standing four. Do your standing four, Squid? Okay, standing four. So basically, if me and him are in each other's faces, I do 401, yeah, 401, yeah, 401, and he does standing four. Mine will come out faster because mine is two or three, I think it's two or three frame, frames faster. So we're gonna both 
do our standing normals at the same time. Alright, one, two, three, go. See? He's pressing it, as you can see, his inputs, he's pressing it, but mine's is coming out faster because mine's is two frames faster. Alright. So what that means is that I can hit him before he can hit me. And that's basically start up in a nutshell. Is who has the fastest buttons. And in this case, my standing one, or my forward one actually, would be six frames, so it'll be a lot faster than his his mid. All right, now let me look at Jackie's other standing normals. I'm gonna find one that's much slower so that you can kind of see, so it's not like comparing apples to oranges. Let's see, controlling player two, move list. Okay, 13, 14. Yeah, that's eight frames. So it's two frames faster. Okay, perfect. Back four. So Squid, I need you to do back four. All right, do back four. Back four. Okay, that's his sweep attack. That is, I can't remember. I just looked at it, but I think it's it's in the double frames. So basically, when he presses that button, and I do this. He might low profile me, but if I do my mid, which is this, my mid is back one and it is nine frames. So my mid should beat out his because mine is faster. All right, one, two, three, go. Right, one, two, three, go. Go. See how he's trying to get it out? But mine is beating his because mine is a lot faster. All right, so that's basically start up in a nutshell. Next thing I'm going to talk about is plus and minus on block. So, actually, I'm going to switch to Jack. So two. And instead of that, I want to do. Uh, we'll, we'll stick with full auto. Okay. So, as you can see, full auto, if I do any one of her combos. I'll be plus. Not any one of them, but most of them I'll be plus. Plus two, look at the block advantage, which is down on the bottom left. So I'm basically, if I do this, I'm plus two. Let's see, what else? Oh wait, I'm still on Lucane, sorry. All right, plus two, plus two. Plus two, look at all that. Plus one, plus two, plus two, plus two. So most of her stuff is plus two. So basically what that means is on block, if I hit him and he's retained, if he's blocking, go ahead and block. That means that after I hit him, I'm at an advantage. So he cannot move until it's time for him to move. And technically the time for him to move is after my two frames have expired. So after that, I got two frames to where I can do anything I want to him, anything, because he's blocking and I'm plus. Now, we'll get into when he can beat me out or when he can poke me out a little bit later, but as of right now, basically, if I do this, I'm plus two. He can't do anything. A way that you can test this out in practice is do the jump test. You can set the AI to jump straight up in the air after you hit him. So if he blocks and hold the up button, hold up, okay he's on the, so basically block, once I hit him, I should be able to jump first, you can kind of see it, Liu Kang's a little bit taller so it's going to look like he's jumping a little bit higher, but basically I'm able to move before him, I need to switch characters so that I can show you a better representation of that, I'm going to pick somebody that's really really plus on block after doing certain certain things, Let's see, who's really plus on block? Maybe Squid knows somebody that's really plus on block. Like Kung Lao. Yes, sir. And I will pick Sucker. Alright, so what I'm going to get him to do is do his EX hat. Hat spin, which is the spin that goes around his body, which is down back one. He is plus five, if I'm not mistaken, which means that I can't do anything for five frames. Yep, he's gonna go look at it. Okay. 
HP is plus 5, and I can't do anything. So now we're going to do the jump test. I'm going to block, he's going to do his hat, and he's going to jump straight up. And we're going to see who is going to be able to jump first. See? He's plus, so he can jump before I can. He can basically do, he can basically, I'm basically at his mercy because he's plus on block. I can't do anything. This is where you should not press buttons. You should not touch anything. You should just wait your turn. It depends on the special move that he does. If he does EX hat, go ahead and do it. I can maybe backdash or I can armor out or something like that. But at this point, if your opponent does this at the start of the match, you should not be moving. You should not be pressing. You should not be doing anything or you're going to get hit. I used to get hit a lot because after he does EX hat, go into, yeah, go into something. After he does EX hat, I try to get something out, but I cannot get something out. And the reason I can't get anything out is because his down one is, I think, six frames. Go to your down one in the move list. Okay, seven frames. Go back. All right, his down. Now watch this. This is the crazy part. His down one is seven frames. My stand one is seven frames. So you would think, also my down one is seven frames. So you would think that we have the same amount of frames coming out that we would trade but nope he's plus on block so his is gonna be much more faster than mine go ahead and do it i'm gonna try to do a down one. see i'm trying to do a down one but i can't even get it out so when he's plus on block i should not be pressing anything i should be waiting to see what he does now if he if he does it and pokes me i can poke back if he blocks that, then I'll be negative, but we'll get into that later. So that's basically how you know that you're plus on block. You go into the move list, you see your attack, and you see how many plus frames you have. Now, it's better to be plus 5 than it is to be plus 1 or plus 2. But being plus in general is going to be a good thing. Alright, that means that your opponent has to guess what you're going to do next. Alright, the next thing I want to talk about is being negative on block. So... Right now, if Kung Lao does his regular hat spin, he's negative five, which means that I have five. Okay, that's okay. That'll work. Oh, negative three. My bad. I don't know why I thought it was negative five. So he's minus three. So being minus three is technically still safe because there is no move in the game that can punish that at being negative three, because to punish that move. Your move, your startup of your move will have to be two frames, even three frames. Maybe you could squeeze it out there if it's online, but probably not. But your move will have to be two frames, and that does not exist in this game. So if he's negative three, that means he has lost his turn. He can try to down one me, but after he down one me, after he tries to down one me, if I do it at the same time, I think his down one is seven frames and mine is seven frames. See what happens if I block. Okay, go again. I can get the move first because he's negative. So now it's my turn. After he, go ahead and do it. Show him again. Look at that. He can't even do it. He's trying. Go ahead and try. Look, as you can see his input, he's trying to get his down one. Not only is he doing that, but he's doing down one and he's doing the extra one to see if he can mash it out. He cannot do anything because he's negative. He shouldn't be moving because now it's my turn. Now, also, if he's negative on block, this is the thing you got to watch out for, though. If he's negative on block, and I know he's negative on block, and I go for, let's see, a high, which is seven frames. Uh, we'll do back one. All right, my back one is 11 frames startup, right? So, he's negative three. So for three frames, he cannot move. Once that situation resets, he can now move. So any move that he can he wants to do, which will probably be down one, it'll be seven frames. But technically, you add that three frames that he's negative onto that seven frame move that he's gonna do next, and that'll make that 10 frames. Technically, that's the way that I perceive it, and that's the way that I was able to learn it. So basically, if you're negative, you add frames onto what you're about to do next. If you're plus, you take away frames from what you're about to do next. So, if he's plus five and he does a seven frame down one, that makes his down one, in my eyes, that makes his down one two frames. Sounds crazy, but that's the way that I look at it. 
So back to what I was saying. If he, let's see, okay, if he's negative three and I decide to go for a back one, which is 11 frames, but he does a down one, he should still beat me by one frame. Let me make sure y'all understand that, what I'm saying. Matter of fact, let me let me choose a slower move so that I won't confuse you. 17, okay, back two. Back two is 12 frames. So, if he does a hat spin, he's negative three. If I decide to go with my back two at 12 frames, I should you would think that I beat him because he's negative. Nope, that's not the case. If he decides to do a move or throw any move out there and it's faster than my move by, let's see, what's the math on that? By those three frames that I had to take off. So his down one will be what, 10 frames now? My move is 12 frames, so technically he's negative, but my move is still slower. So we're gonna try it out. So he's gonna do a hat spin, then he's gonna uh, do a down one. At the same time, I'm going to try to do a back two. See, I was not able to get it out. Go again. See, trying to get it out, but I cannot. Because that moves too slow. Now, do the same situation, but I can down one them. So, be very careful when your opponent is negative. Be very careful at what you throw out. Usually, when someone is safe, general rule is you throw out a poke. Any of your pokes that are fast, fast hitting, you throw those out. So, that's what being negative on blocks means. It means that it's not their turn. But always remember that you have to be careful on which move you decide to throw out next because they can beat you out if they choose certain moves or if they decide to backdash because being safe also means that if they choose to go with a fast or a slower move to try to punish you, you can backdash. Alright, next thing I wanted to talk about was recovery and whiffs. And for this I'm going to use Tremor and let's say Ferritor. I'll be Tremor, and could you pick Ferritor? Ferritor, Tremor. Okay. Uh, doesn't matter which one. Yeah. Okay, so basically in a nutshell, recovery, I'll show you in the frame data, but recovery is the time that it, it takes you from the moment you throw out that, that move it's the time that it takes you to reset back to neutral, which we're both in neutral right now. He's not moving, I'm not moving. We're both in neutral. I'm not in neutral no more because I threw out a normal. I'm not in neutral. I'm in recovery. Once I throw that move out, I have to wait. He's in recovery because he just threw that move out. So, with whiffs, basically this is a whiff. If I'm back here and he's back there on full screen and we're both at neutral, I decide to throw out this. Guess what? He can whiff punish me because now I just threw out a normal and I have to recover. But also, he can do the same thing. If he throws out, do um, back two. Do back two, I think it's back two, three. Okay. All right, now if he throws that out and he doesn't hit me, I can whiff punish him because he just threw a move out in neutral without making contact with me. And I can go in, if I can get it tight enough, go in. It's, a very, it's kind of a tight window for some characters, but if I can catch him, he's getting punished, brother. So that's basically whiff recovery, and how you figure this out is, you go into your frame data, you pick a move, let's say I pick Tremors, yeah. This is a good string to show you with punish. All right, so if I pick a string like one, two, down three, that's 23 frames of recovery. That means after I hit that input, watch this. I'm done inputting. As you can see by the camera, my hand's not moving. I'm done with inputs. I still have to recover. So basically, I can't do anything until I recover from that move, and that's 23 frames. So if he catches me, while I'm doing that string, yeah. If, he, yeah, if he catches me doing that string while I'm not making contact, I just whiff. And he can do, if he can pick the right normals, he can punish me for that. Nah, uh, let's see. I can't even block. I, I still have to recover. See how I'm holding block? That's probably a bad string because that last hit gets low. And it, it goes pretty far. But let's say I do, 
Okay, let's say I do that. See? You can whiff punish me. So, the general rule is you don't throw out normals unless you're trying to bake something. In neutral, you do not throw out normals. The only time you throw out normals is if it's a fast normal with good recovery, such as... Let's say, uh, let's say a down one. Generally, so 12 frames is not that bad for full screen. So the only time I would want to throw this out is if I think he's about to approach. And I, I throw that out. And then I can I can stop him from running up, doing run up overhead or run up low or something like that. That's the only time you want to throw out normals. If you're back here and you're throwing out normals, you're going to get hit, buddy. See? Because that's all about your recovery. You still have to recover... And he's already about to start his attack. And you just sitting there helpless because you decided to throw out normals. That's basically whiff, whiffing and whiff punishing in a nutshell. Let's see. I'm making good time here. All right, safe. All right, now next I'm going to go over safety. I only got like three points left. So next I'm going to go over oops, safety. And for this, what am I doing? For this, I'm going to use Goro and Ninjutsu Scorpion. Uh, I will use Ninjutsu Scorpion. Goro. Yep, yeah, you use that. <laughs> and keep in mind, guys, this is my first time making a tutorial like this. So, I'm probably going to miss some things or say some things wrong. I plan on re I plan on updating this video when MK11 comes out, but as of right now, I'm just pretty much practicing or seeing how the flow goes to figure this out all right so basically with being safe and unsafe if you go into the moves list uh squid could you go into your moves list go to punch walk all right punch walk which is back four four as you can see that move is minus five on block so what that means is that move is safe because Scorpion does not have a four frame move that is fast enough to stop that from to stop that once it's blocked. That now his okay, we're gonna do both of those. So his EX punch walk, which is called Fist Flurry, is negative twelve. That means I can punish the heck out of that with anything eleven frames or faster. And oh, so, and if I go back to let me go to my move list. Alright, so we saw EX Punch Walk was negative 12 on block. So, as you can see, any one of my normals can punish that. 9 frames, 9 frames, 7 frames, which is the fastest one. And even this move should technically be able to punish that. 10 frames. I'm going to try all four of these. And I'm going to show you that I should be able to punish Goro after he does Punch Walk. So, basically, being safe. Is when you do a move that no one in the game can punish or the character that you're fighting can pu can't punish. That's why it's good to know everybody's frame data. So I know that once he does punch walk, he's going to be minus five. The only thing I can do to check that is down one because that's seven frames. All right, let me block it. I'm going to block it. Minus five. He can still block because my move is seven frames. But if it was six, I think it's six frames. Let me try to get a block. Get a, okay, go. Oh wait, right. if I'm not mistaken, my down one is, I think it's seven frames. Six frames, so I should be able to get a down one in there. It's really, really tight, but I should be able to get a down one in there. Okay, there we go. You just gotta spam it. Okay, so you see, I was able to get a down one because he's minus five. So that means for, for five frames, he can't block. I don't have a move that's fast enough to punish it. So the safest thing I can do, actually with Goro, the safest thing you can do is block because another punch walk might be coming, an EX punch walk, which has like two or 3,000 hits of armor. But for this, for the sake of this video, let's say that he's not going to do that. The best thing I can do is hit a down one because that's the only thing that's going to be able to check him because that's six frames. All right, and he doesn't have anything fast enough to stop me from doing that. So the only thing he can do is block. So he has to either block my down one or take it. But that's all he can do. 
Alright, so unsafe is if he was to do EX punch walk. EX punch walk. EX punch walk, not EX EX. No, you don't enhance it. Oh, I guess you're doing that because you're not going to be able to block. Um, go and see how much the frame better the enhancement is. Alright, so I, I should be able to punish him. It's kind of fight. Let me try my standing three. Okay, I was able to punish that. Now I'll try again. Okay. Okay, so I'm able to punish him because he's so negative that my fastest moves can punish him. And what do my fastest moves lead into? If you don't know, my standing one leads to 114. My standing two leads to 212 or 214. My standing three doesn't lead to anything except EX teleport, which I can still combo off. So pretty much any of my moves should punish him if he's that negative. But when he does the regular punch walk, he's only minus five. All right, so that's what being safe and unsafe means. Basically, you want to structure your attacks around something that cannot be punished. His regular punch walk cannot be punished. All right, so now I'm going to show you pushback. So if you see block, if I do this forward, forward, so forward two, I'm negative 11. Not mistaken. Uh, let's see. Ye yes, I'm negative negative eleven after he blocks it. But guess what? Try to do your standing. What is it? I think your back one is six frames. Go to your moves. Okay, what's that? Go to that. See what four three is. Okay, sixteen frame. That won't be able to punish. Uh, go to back. Do back one. Okay, back one is nine frames. Uh, I'll see if you got one that's faster. It's a little faster. Um, no, nah, that won't work either. I'm trying to get a punish. Do like, what's two one two? Which one are you anyway? Oh, you don't have two one two. Uh, go try go down to two or four two back two something. Keep going. Okay, go back up to go back up to stand one. Uh, it's still too tight. Uh, try um, go down to four two seventeen. What's that? Uh, let's see. go up. Nine. Okay, so what's down for? Okay, down four is nine frames. So he should be able to punish me with his down four, right? After I do four two, right? So I'm gonna try to block that. So I can block that. That window is too tight. Right? Matter of fact, put me in the corner. Okay. Maybe these are not the best characters to show you this with, but basically what I wanted to show you was pushback. So, maybe you want me to block low? Okay, so basically pushback is where you're negative, but your opponent can't punish you because you push them so far back. Uh, I think a better example of this would be Katana. Let me show him Katana. And if, Squid, if you can think of anybody that has push good pushback you can pick them but I'm gonna show them Katana. Katana. Yeah, war guy. That's a good pick, man. You you really using your head. <laughs> All 
Okay, so I'm gonna test out my two one two. Now, two. Right, so let's see, two one two. Okay, two one two. Ah, uh, crap. That's. All of her crap is safe. I'm trying to find out something that's extremely negative. Right, let me try this. Yeah, that's punishable. Why is that not coming out? I guess it. I'm. Don't block. Okay, it only comes out on here. Okay, she doesn't have anything that's really punishable like that. Eh, maybe, maybe that. Okay, so I was gonna show you her. This is only negative three, but so you, that so that you can kind of see the concept, I'm still gonna do it. Go ahead and block. All right, now I'm gonna throw out a fan. What's fan on block? I think fan is punishable on block. Yep, negative eight. So if he has a six frame move, he can punish this, but watch this. What's that, nine frames? Well, that's because I wasn't blocking. Yeah, that's nine frames. That's because I wasn't blocking. Okay, so when you see this matchup, something that you gotta take into account is that Kotal Khan has board advancing moves. So, of course, he can get to Katana, but some people in the cast, like Jackie Briggs, they don't really have forward advancing normals like that. Jackie has her back one. That'll kind of move her up, but that's a high. It starts out as a high, I think. Or it might be a mid, I'm not, I'm not sure. Oops. But basically, some characters have pushback. So if you block their attack, if they're, they're negative, so they're, they're supposed to be able to be punished, but see that pushback? He can't do anything. I can walk back. See, I can get away if I wanted to. Look at that. That pushback allows me to escape his pressure. Or... Right. I'm just not fast enough. Hold on. You're in the corner, that's why. I'm gonna try to back there. Look at that. I could backdash. I could have probably did a double backdash and got away. But basically the pushback allows him allows me to have some wiggle room as to what I can do so that he can't escape. Also, I'm not directly in his face. So guess what I can do? Try to try to um hit me back. Why wanna come? That used to have armor on it, but I'm just doing that to show you that I could armor. That's not an armor move, but say if I was Scorpion, that could be back four or four or something. That could be something that's armorable. It won't come out this time. All right, but that's basically pushback. I think I could have done a better job explaining that, but I wasn't prepared. I thought for some reason that Scorpion's four or two had good enough pushback to wear he wouldn't be able to be punished. I probably picked the wrong characters for that. All right, so I'm going to move on to the counter poke war. And for this, I will use Scorpion and Sub-Zero. Actually, I can use anybody because counter poking is pretty cut and dry. So somebody that has good poke, I would say Melina. Melina, uh, This guy has really good pokes. Okay, so basically, with the counter, po counter poke war, it's basically stopping your opponent from attacking you, and you stopping, and your opponent stopping you from attacking them. So yeah, that's a pretty good poke. Look how far that is. I think you can get me at the start of the round. 
Yep, don't move. Just go straight into it. All right, yeah. Got to come up a little bit. She can get me at the start of the round. Wait, that was a sweep. Do that again. Yeah. Look at that. That's ridiculous. That's so far. But anyway, but I digress. Okay, so with the counter poke war, basically when you and your opponent are in each other's faces and you're here, you're probably already negative. That's why you're blocking. So see how he did that? He's negative. So that's why you're blocking low. What, what the counter poke war is, who's going to get the first hit? So if we're both down here, block. He's going to try to down one me back. If I see that my down one gets blocked, my best bet is to block because I can't do anything after that if I think that my opponent is going to throw a mid at me. If he throws a high, of course, I could probably double down one or down, double down three or maybe down four and then back up or something like that. But if, if I get my attack blocked, look how negative I am. So down one is minus five, it's still a safe poke. Let's see, down three is minus six, down four is minus five. So probably her most unsafe poke is minus six, which is down three. All right, block the down three. All right, so what I like to do and what most players like to do is when you block, yes, you poke back, or if you poke, this is how the counter war plays out. It's so crazy. This is how it plays out. One person will do something unsafe. The They'll start blocking low. The other person, it's their turn. They'll poke just to check that attack that they just did that was unsafe. They'll get blocked. And then the person that just did the unsafe attack gets another turn, right? So this is how, generally, this is how it looks. Block my, um, let's see. I have... My hot. Okay, that's minus eight. So block that. Block and poke me, okay? And, and I'll poke him back. This is generally how the poke war will look. So I would throw out an unsafe attack, or I would throw out something like that. I would block. Then I would poke him. But since I blocked his down one, he would poke me back. Now watch how this plays out. See? See how he poked me after I poked him, I got blocked, he poked me back, and I just started attacking. Now usually that's how the, that's how a poke war plays out. So let me show you that again. So I do this. Alright, one more time. See? That's usually how it plays out. But sometimes it can go a bit longer. Now this time squid, you're gonna start attacking. You're gonna poke me, I'm going to get hit. No. You're gonna poke me, I'm gonna poke you back, and then you start attacking. So. See? Alright, and that's generally how a counter poke war would look. It's basically who can get the hit first. And in this case, whoever gets the hit first, you can you have one or two options. You can start well whoever doesn't get the hit, you can start attacking after you get poked. But you gotta be be mindful that that person can do any of their poke attacks and they could beat you out on your next attack if it's going to be a high or you could just go ahead and start attacking which and there's also a third option is you can usually down fours are good you can down four and back up because they have good pushback block my down four see i have good pushback so i can probably back dash and get out of the way of anything so generally a poke war would go down one He'll do a down one. Then I'll probably do a down four and get out the way. That's what he does to me a lot. I'll If Squid will poke me and I block it, he'll poke me back with a down four and back up and whiff punish me for trying to poke again. Okay? So that's basically how the counter poke, counter poke war works. And the frame data behind that is... These are usually the fastest... The fastest normals that you're going to have is your pokes. Sometimes they could be six frames, seven frames, maybe nine frames. But they're usually faster than your normals, and they are better because they hit lower. So, what if they try to hit you with a high attack? It's gonna whip. I I think I could have did a better job explaining that too, but whatever. All right, my last one. I'm going to go over cancels. I saved this one for last because I don't quite understand how the frame data works on that myself, but. 
for this one, I'm going to be using high tech Jackie. Oops, that's not Jackie. Jackie Bridge, Devora. Yep, and he'll use the. <laughs> Alright, so cancels. Cancels are things that you can do after your attacks. And basically the way they work in MKX is they're a special move that you can cancel by either backing up, dashing forward, or in some cases like tremors, you can do down down and it'll cancel. So those are the three ways that you can get them to cancel. Alright, so with cancels I don't quite understand how you understand the frames on that but I know that Jackie's let's see that's plus one block so basically I can move before she can the way that I think cancels work is they allow you to recover faster let's see from let's see if I do Jackie's okay this, this is plus one but it recovers in 24 frames if I cancel that into Alright, if I cancel that into quick burst, that'll make my recovery 19 frames, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and cancels don't have any frame that on it, so it's kinda hard to explain. But I, I do know that some things gel. So like, try to down one me. He can down one me because that's a high. But let me try my, not that. Let me try my standing. See, he's trying to down one there. But I'm able to let's see. Right, let's see. Let me pick another normal because I think stand four is nine frames. No, eight frames. Yeah, I'm not I'm not not really sh too sure how they work. Like I'm not sure why some cancels jail and some don't. Uh, Squid, if you know, you might know. Do you know? Do a teabag if you know. If you don't know, jump up. Okay, you don't know how to work either. Okay. So, I just know that some strings are plus after you cancel. Maybe that's not one, so I'm going to test it out right now. Yeah, so I can get poked out anyway. So, the only person I know that has plus cancels... Well, how take Jackie shoes? I take Jackie Shield, but I'm really not sure how that works, so that's probably where I'm going to end the video. Uh, hopefully you guys were un able to understand a little bit of what I was saying. Like I said, when MK11 comes out, I'll do a whole nother tutorial. Basically, I'm going to watch this video probably a hundred times and clean up and polish what I need to polish so that I can get a better guide or a better tutorial out for the next video game. This one was just to get my feet wet, basically. So that's right. Hold on. That's so hard. Anyway, but yeah, that's it. That's all I got for you. So I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, if you would like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching.